Rebecca Spellman. I'm a registered psychologist and cognitive behavioural therapist. I work with a lot of panic disorder. So when people are coming with panic attacks that are persistent. And the reason I like working with panic disorder is because it's very treatable. As long as people have the right information and they have the right treatment, they can overcome it. And what I find works best is cognitive behavioral therapy based on David Clark's treatment approach. So when people have panic attacks, often they don't really know that they're panic attacks. Some people do, some people don't, but it often starts off with an initial panic attack that's very bad. That's usually the worst one. And people may go to A&E when they have that experience, or they may just end up really thinking something awful is going to happen to them, to them and once they've had one panic attack they'll often experience lots of others and it becomes a really vicious cycle. So I'm going to talk to you in this video about what panic attacks are actually are, how to know if, if that's what you're experiencing or if it might actually be something else and how to overcome them. What kind of things can you do to nip these panic attacks in the bud once and for all? When I treat people with panic disorder, sometimes I can help them in one session where they actually stop having panic attacks at that point. Other people, it takes about three sessions or maybe six sessions. But the thing to note is that if you have treatment with the right practitioner, it's a very brief treatment. It doesn't actually last for a very long time. You can go from having these panic attacks to being panic free, and being really confident that you won't experience any more panic attacks in a really short period of time. We experience anxiety to help us in situations. For example, if we're standing on the edge of a cliff and we feel anxious, those physical symptoms that we feel are enough for us to take an action to keep ourselves safe. However, our body is kind of primitive in ways because when we've had stress or anxiety in our life that's not necessarily physical, job interview, work stress, stress in our personal life and our relationships, we may not have control over these situations and feeling anxious is not actually gonna help us take an immediate action that will keep ourselves safe. There is no physical threat and therefore the anxiety is not necessarily serving a function like it does with physical threat or danger. However, our body operates in the same way. So if we've been experiencing a lot of anxiety in our lives, our body responds to it as a warning sign. However, there's nothing we can really do right then and there. And therefore, we're feeling anxious and we're having these anxiety physical symptoms as a bit of a false alarm. We're not in danger of dying, so therefore we don't really need to take uh, an immediate action right then and there. But when we're having these panic attacks, our body is making us feel that we're in some really severe, serious danger. Panic disorder and panic attacks can be incredibly distressing for people. The symptoms are horrible, it can come on out of the blue. Some people will have nighttime panic attacks where they're woken up by having a panic attack. And some people will just have panic attacks in certain situations like traveling on public transport or going into very enclosed spaces or crowds or, or when they're flying. It's different for different people, but there's a lot of common things about panic attacks. One thing that all panic attack sufferers have in common is that they've been experiencing a lot of anxiety in their life recently. They may not feel anxious right at the time of having that panic attack. It can feel like it's coming on out of the blue, or for some people they are anxious at the time of having a panic attack. But really the key is that there's been anxiety in your life and that has led to a lot of physical changes in your body, which is your body's way of responding to the anxiety. So the reason why you're experiencing these panic attacks is you're anxious about something. There's some sort of stressful or anxiety provoking event in your life that's been happening. And that's caused some real physical changes in your body. And when you experience these physical changes, you misinterpret them and you worry that something really bad 
is going to happen as a result of these physical responses. For example, if you're having heart palpitations, you might worry that you're going to have a heart attack. If you're having very shallow breathing, you might think that you might uh, suffocate or you might not be able to breathe properly. Or if you're feeling dizzy, you might feel that you might faint. Or if you're feeling nauseous, you might feel you might vomit. Whatever these physical changes are, people misinterpret them and they think that something really catastrophic is going to happen them right now. And then the unhelpful behaviour that people do as a result of this, these panic attacks is what keeps the cycle going. Usually people will leave the situation when they notice these anxious, situ anxious symptoms occurring or they will avoid the situation altogether for fear of having a panic attack, which means they worry that if they were to ever go back into that situation again, these anxiety symptoms would happen and they may have a panic attack. So it becomes a really vicious cycle. So panic attacks are a very vicious cycle in that somebody will experience a physical symptom initially. So it might be heart palpitations, dizziness, shallow breathing. There's a whole host of symptoms that people might actually experience. And then straight away they think something really awful is going to happen to me. I'm going to lose control. I'm going to have a heart attack. I'm going to faint. I'm going to vomit. Um, and then as a result of those catastrophic thoughts, or catastrophic thought or belief, they start to feel more anxious. So they're worried about it. They start to have more heart palpitations, more sweating, more dizziness, and then they feel even worse and they start thinking, oh no, now I'm really gonna have a panic attack. And they will then do an unhelpful behavior, which feels helpful. They'll either get out of the situation or sit down and relax, or they'll try and do something to make it stop right away. But by doing that, they never learn that actually those symptoms would have just glided away by themselves. They'll only last for about five to 10 minutes, maybe even shorter, if they just sit with them, do nothing and just carry on with life as normal, the symptoms will just go away by themselves. Nothing bad's gonna happen and they will be absolutely fine. However, it feels really counterintuitive to not respond to these symptoms because they're so powerful, they're so distressing when you experience them. People will usually try and do something to make them go away. But it's worth noting that when people have a panic attack, it's a very brief, intense burst of feeling of fear or, or threat, and then actually it subsides and goes away really quickly. It's the thoughts and the unhelpful behaviors that actually feed into that cycle and keep panic attacks going. I'm going to introduce you to some of the ideas behind the negative thinking and how that feeds into panic attacks. First of all, I want you to have a look at the screen and I would like you to read a list of these paired words and I want you to focus on the meaning. So if you could please read them out loud and focus on the meaning of the words as you're reading them out loud and I'll give you a little bit of feedback after you do this. So right now you're going to see on the screen a list of paired words, read them out loud, really focus on the meaning. I'll give you some time to do that and I'll explain why I'm asking you to do this in a moment. For many people, when they read these paired words and they focus on the meaning, they start to experience anxious symptoms. 
So you start actually having some of these physical symptoms of anxiety, similar to what they experience when they're having a panic attack. And that tells people that actually just thinking about panic, thinking about the physical symptoms, thinking about the meaning of these paired words actually can bring on the symptoms, which tells people that actually there's a huge link between their thinking and panic attacks. So if we could actually change the thinking part of the cycle, we can help you overcome these panic attacks. It's your thoughts that are feeding into the cycle. Your negative thoughts, your misinterpretation of the physical symptoms is what's making these panic attacks continue. Now for some people, reading those paired words is not enough to bring on the symptoms, and that's fine. It's definitely worth showing you this just in case. But actually, if that didn't work for you, I'd like you to notice the thoughts that you have the next time you have a panic attack. What's going through your mind? Is it, I'm gonna faint, I'm gonna lose control, I'm gonna have a heart attack, I can't breathe properly? What's going through your mind? And have a think about, if you didn't have that thought, if we could wipe that away and replace it with a thought such as, I'm just fine, I'm absolutely fine, it's only anxiety, anxiety has never killed anyone and it's gonna drift away in a couple of minutes, this is gonna be very brief and I can tolerate it, I can withstand it. If you had that kind of thinking, would that make a difference? You might find it helpful to write down a note of the more helpful way of thinking about these situations. For example, you might want to note on a piece of paper or on your phone, somewhere where you can see it quite easily, I can be in control. These symptoms are horrible, but they're not going to kill me. They'll subside in a couple of moments. I'm not going to faint. I'm not going to have a heart attack. I'm not going to collapse. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to stop breathing. I'm not going to vomit. Whatever is important for you. And note that down so you can see it in every situation. It's important for people to know that if they feel they might faint, and that's the catastrophic belief for them when they're having a panic attack, it's very, 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 very unlikely that you're going to faint when you have a panic attack. It almost never happens. So it's really important for you to know that these catastrophic thoughts you're having, whatever they might be, it's very, very, very unlikely for them to come true. If you suffer with panic, disorder and you've been given that diagnosis and you've been ruled out of having any other real serious medical conditions, then you know that these physical symptoms are just panic and there's nothing else serious going on. For some people it's important for them to go to their GP and have some other symptoms ruled out or other medical conditions ruled out. But if these symptoms come on out of the blue and they last for a brief couple of moments, and they happen in, a, in certain situations perhaps, then you know this is probably panic attacks and not anything more serious. Often people will worry about their health and they'll worry that actually it's a more serious condition here. Take one trip to your GP, have some tests, have it ruled out, and then don't keep going back because you'll know that actually it's panic that you're experiencing and not anything more serious. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about an exercise that is really important for you to try. A lot of people don't like doing this, but it's not going to cause you any harm. I do this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times because I, I show a lot of people how to overcome panic disorder. So I'd like you to stand up, wherever you are right now, stand up. And we're going to do an exercise that's perfectly safe for you to do. You're just going to have to trust me on that one and I will explain what it is all about afterwards. So if you just follow my lead right now, we're going to breathe quite quickly. And we're gonna do this for about a minute. And it's gonna be like this. And if you'd like to do this with me, 
right now. Um, a lot of people experience panic, don't like doing this exercise, but you're gonna have to trust me on this one. This is a technique that I show people to help them overcome panic. So we're gonna do this for about 60 seconds. Really kind of breathe in and do this hyperventilation exercise as much as you can. And this, you should start to feel some symptoms and they, they should be kind of similar to uh, what you experience when you're having a panic attack. If they're not similar, then, then try and do a little bit more. No cheating, as often people don't completely take in as much air as they can. Um, this is perfectly safe. If you start to feel dizzy, please don't sit down. If you start to feel some of those panic symptoms, I assure you, you're not gonna have a panic attack. Um, these symptoms will instantly go away as, as soon as you stop doing this breathing. So please carry on and uh, do this with me. And if you do this for one minute in total, or until you start feeling that these symptoms are very similar to what you experience when you're having a panic attack. And well done for trying that. What most people will have noticed is that when they did that exercise, they started to feel dizzy, they had dry mouth, their chest felt tight. They had all of these symptoms that are very similar to what they experience when they're having a panic attack. It's really counterintuitive for anyone to make themselves have these symptoms on purpose. So for anyone who's been experiencing panic disorder, they're very phobic of having those sensations. They're scared of them, so they'll avoid doing it. So as part of your homework to help you overcome panic disorder once and for all, I would like you to practice inducing these panic-like symptoms on a regular basis maybe do it once a day for the next week. Get used to feeling those symptoms that you're afraid of feeling. And what will start to happen is that you realize that actually these symptoms don't last for a very long time and that you can tolerate them. They're not as horrible or as horrific or as catastrophic as what you once thought, but actually it's something that comes on and it's something that can actually drift away as well. This, is, this technique is part of the rest of the treatment, but it's one step that's really important to helping you get closer to overcoming panic disorder once and for all. Usually when people actually do this a number of times, they start to realize that actually these symptoms are tolerable. They may experience these symptoms when they're anxious, but these symptoms are not gonna kill them and nothing bad's gonna happen them. So I'd like you to practice for the next week once a day doing this hyperventilation exercise to try and induce those symptoms very similar to what you experience when you're having a panic attack. It's very similar to overcoming spider phobia or overcoming any phobia. If you keep putting yourself in that situation, it gets easier and easier. It's like watching a horror movie a hundred times. The first time is horrific, it's scary, it's not nice, but by time number 100, actually it's a bit boring, you're completely desensitized. So this exercise is about desensitizing yourself towards those anxiety symptoms. This is really gonna help you if you practice this. A lot of people are reluctant to do it, but it's important to give it a try. Now, if this technique doesn't work in inducing the panic-like symptoms, you can try something else. You can try running up and down the stairs to get your heart beating really fast. You can try sitting on a chair and maybe bringing your head down and bringing it up quite quickly. Or you can get a straw and breathing through a very thin straw. And you know, it's different what works for different people. For some people it's spinning around in a circle until they feel quite dizzy. Find what works for you and practice it every day for the next week. Induce the panic-like symptoms in order to help you be less scared of them. Best of luck with that. So if you suffer from panic attacks, it's a little bit like having a phobia, like spider phobia or needle phobia or fear of flying. You need to continue to put yourself in the feared situations and get used to experiencing those symptoms and desensitize from those horrible feelings and it's gonna get easier. 
So for example, if you experience heart palpitation and dizziness and dry mouth every time you go on an underground train, then I'd like you to put yourself on that underground train as much as possible. Maybe initially go with a friend if that makes it easier, but then I want you to go on your own eventually. Um, because if you always go with a friend, you'll start to feel you can't do it on your own. And if you're doing anything like always taking a seat, then I'd like you to make sure that you stand up and you move around and you do the most counterintuitive things to help yourself overcome and, and get maximum exposure for these panic attacks. So make a list of what kind of situations you think are gonna trigger your panic attacks and desensitize to these symptoms by continually getting in as much exposure work as possible. Make a plan in the next week of a couple of times that you can go into this situation. The more times the better, and the sooner you do it the better, because when people have panic attacks, they avoid any situation where they feel it's gonna trigger the panic attack. But by avoiding the situation, it maintains that belief that actually if I go into that situation, I'm gonna have a panic attack and I can't cope with that. So for example, if it is trains is a trigger for you, go into that situation, let yourself experience those symptoms, sit with it, do the other techniques that I mentioned, such as focusing outward, and wait for those symptoms to disappear or subside. It's not gonna take very long. Don't get off the train sooner than is helpful. Wait till the anxiety has come down before you leave the situation. And repeat this over and over. Get used to feeling those symptoms of the anxiety. They're not nice, but they're not gonna kill you. And the more you allow yourself to experience these symptoms, the easier it will get. You'll start to really desensitize and learn that you can cope with these symptoms. And over time, you won't notice them as strong as they have been before. But if you continue to avoid these situations, then you're gonna maintain your panic attacks and you're gonna maintain your panic disorder. When people have panic disorder, there is some helpful distraction they can do and there's some less helpful distraction that they can do. So I'm gonna talk about how you need to be distracting yourself, and where you need to be focusing when you're feeling anxious. When people have panic attacks or they feel very anxious, they naturally focus inward on the unhelpful physical symptoms, the not nice physical symptoms and the unhelpful thoughts. Where I'd like you to place your focus is outward onto the environment. Use all your senses to help you. Sense of sight, what can you see? What are people doing around you? What are you noticing? Hearing, what can you hear? What kind of sounds? The quieter sounds, the louder sounds. Is there any smells that you can notice? In general, what's going on around you? And keep bringing your focus back outward. It may keep going inward again because you're anxious and the natural tendency is to focus inward on those not nice physical symptoms. However, those symptoms don't really need very much attention because nothing more is going to happen. They're going to play out and they're going to subside. Uh, anxiety can't stay at a really high point forever. It has to reach a peak and come down. So the only thing that's going to happen, those symptoms and those thoughts is they're going to drift away at some point. You don't need to give them any um, focus. You don't need to attend to them too much. Just let them play out, let them have a mind of their own. So put your focus outward, keep bringing it outward, and then you will notice that the anxiety doesn't go away right away, but it becomes a lot more tolerable. Now, often people will try and distract themselves by using unhelpful methods, such as listening to music, or reading a book or something that they can't use in every situation. So I would only like you to use your senses to help you redirect your focus outward. I would not like you to use anything to distract yourself such as music or books or anything like that. You're relying on having these tangible objects. You know, what if you forget to bring your music or a book sometime? Then you may actually feel more anxious because you don't have this safety mechanism with you. So use these natural things, such as our senses, to be able to place your focus outward and remind yourself to keep practicing doing this. 
it will, it's a simple technique, but it's actually hard to remember when you feel anxious. You're naturally going to be noticing the inward stuff. So keep putting your focus outward. An easy way to actually practice this is when you're relaxed, when you're going to remember it, perhaps put on the TV and put it on a news channel and practice just putting all the focus on the newsreader. What are they saying? How are they appearing? What, are they, what do they look like? What color eyes do they have? What's the finer detail in their face? Do they have any scars or blemishes? And really focus on them and keep practicing doing this and you'll start to master this technique of placing fo focus outward in order to manage those anxiety symptoms much better. Along with the other techniques that I'm showing you, you also need to correct your breathing when you're very anxious or if you're having a panic attack. And the breathing technique I'm gonna show you is gonna help you sit with very high levels of anxiety. When people are anxious, they tend to hold their breath. They breathe sort of, I say down to about here, they kind of hold their shoulders and they're forgetting to breathe. So really in these situations, you need to correct your breathing along with the other techniques that I'm showing you. This alone is not gonna be helpful. You need to do it with the other tools as well. So the breathing technique that I'd like you to practice every time you feel anxious is in through your nose, hold it there for a moment and blow out through pressed lips. In through your nose and blow out through pressed lips. Do this for about one to two minutes and do it nice and slowly. If you're doing it too fast, you're gonna feel dizzy. This technique helps people sit with anxiety. It makes the anxiety a bit more manageable. When people are not breathing and they feel anxious, it feels worse, it doesn't feel good. If people are doing this very relaxing breathing technique, they are acting as if they're relaxed and that's inconsistent with being anxious. So just by slowing down your breathing tells your whole body that you're relaxed. It sends messages of relaxation and therefore your, your physiology responds in a similar way by starting to relax. And remember, we're not trying to eliminate the anxiety completely here. We're just helping you sit with it even more. We're helping you tolerate it. Whereas before, you haven't been able to tolerate it. So essentially what I'm teaching you is to develop a very high anxiety threshold. And just to remind you of that technique again, it's in through your nose. Hold it there for a moment. And blow out through pressed lips. Practice this when you're relaxed in order to remember to do it when you're anxious. Practice this when you're anxious along with the other techniques as well. So what is the best treatment for panic disorder? Well, I find that it's cognitive behavioral therapy and the research finds that it's cognitive behavioral therapy as well. A lot of the research has been informed by David Clark, who has spent years and years studying panic and learning how to really help people with panic disorder. So myself and my colleagues use cognitive behavioral therapy and real accredited, recognized cognitive behavioral therapy. We're all accredited cognitive behavioral therapists here at the clinic. So we do proper CBT with the correct protocols to help people overcome panic attacks. Now, why does cognitive behavioral therapy work for panic disorder? Well, panic disorder is maintained by the thoughts that people have when they're having a panic attack and also the behaviors that they do. So if we help change people's cognitions or change people's thoughts when they're having a panic attack and we also get them doing some very different behaviors, then that tends to break the cycle once and for all. If you've been having panic attacks, it's really easy to overcome this. It does take dedication and motivation on your part as in order to overcome it, you're gonna to have to experience those not so nice symptoms. 
but it is a little bit like a phobia that if you keep putting yourself in that situation again and again and you're doing something different, you're doing something more helpful, you will overcome it. If you follow the steps in this video, and perhaps you might want to get a friend who's going to help you with this, then you can certainly go a long way. But if you would like some further help with it, feel free to get in touch and myself or one of my colleagues here at the clinic will certainly help you overcome your panic attacks. We get great results. It takes about one to six sessions, depending on you as an individual and depending on how hard you'll work. And not only do we see people in the clinic, but often we take them out and about in the real world and get them to go into the situations that they're most scared of. So not all of our treatment takes place at the clinic. We do a lot of real world infield work as well. So whatever your situation is with the panic attacks, we will tailor the approach around what you need and make sure that you get the treatment that's gonna help you get better once and for all. So feel free to get in touch and we'll certainly have a chat with you initially to find out what your situation is and then suggest to you what's going to help. The three things that I'd like you to remember to overcome panic once and for all. Number one, exposure. Induce the panic-like symptoms by doing the hyperventilation exercise or whatever exercises work for you to bring on those symptoms very similar to what you feel when you're having a panic attack. And the other type of exposure is putting yourself in any situations where you fear you might have a panic attack. Technique number two is outward focus. Whenever you're in a situation where you feel very anxious and you worry you might have a panic attack or when you are having a panic attack, focus outward onto the environment and keep placing your focus outward again and again. Number three, control your breathing. Do some very deep controlled breathing that's gonna help you relax and it's gonna help you tolerate the anxiety symptoms even more. If you practice those three strategies, you can really overcome panic attacks once and for all. This takes dedication and hard work, but these are the right strategies. Research has proven that this is what's, what works. And from my own clinical experience, I've helped lots of people with panic attacks, and these really are the tools that people need. You can overcome panic attacks very quickly by practicing these techniques. If you have been having panic attacks, dedicate the next week of your life to really practicing these techniques as much as you can, particularly going into those situations where you fear that you're gonna have a panic attack and by changing your behavior, changing how you've been treating those situations. Don't do any of the behaviors that are unhelpful, such as leaving the situation too soon or doing any crutch-like behaviors. Really feel the fear and do it anyway. Put yourself in these situations Think of it like overcoming a phobia, like spider phobia or a fear of flying. If you know a friend who's got a phobia, they've been avoiding these situations all of their life. And having panic attacks is very similar. You're going to keep avoiding the situations because you're terrified of symptoms. And what I'm trying to show you is that actually, as bad as these symptoms feel, they're nothing to be scared of that if you get used to feeling them, they're like watching a horror movie a hundred times. The first time is horrific, it doesn't feel nice, but if you keep repeating it, you keep doing it again and again, you start to learn that actually these symptoms are toler tolerable and they get easier. And eventually, in these situations, you'll feel very little. You won't feel this anxiety anymore, or you might feel a small about amount of the anxiety, but it's very tolerable and that you feel that you've got it under control. People can control panic attacks and they can stop them once and for all. And people get to, can get to a place where they're very confident that they'll never have a panic attack ever again. And I've helped many people get to that place. If you've got any questions at all about panic attacks, feel free to leave your comments or drop an email to myself, info at privatetherapyclinic.com. And I'd be really happy to have a chat with you and help you answer any of the questions that you have about panic. It's something that you can overcome very quickly. This doesn't take a lot of treatment, but it does take the right kind of treatment and a bit of dedication and hard work on your part. 
So I really hope that you do get better and I hope that you try some of the techniques that I've suggested in this video. If you follow these steps, they do work and there is light at the end of the tunnel. So best of luck with the work that you're gonna do.